Good evening, friends. Um, so my name is Bex, uh, or Rebecca, or Becoming Bex, whatever. Um, and I'm going to be posting this both on my YouTube channel, The Good, The Bad, and The Anxious, as well as on my Instagram, assuming that this, whatever, however long the videos are, uploads. Anyways, um, so this video is a little bit about my skin removal, loose skin removal journey so far. Um, so part one, I don't know. Uh, so I had VSG surgery on 1-16-21 at Blossom Bariatrics in Las Vegas. Um, love them, they're fantastic. Um, and I have lost over 160 pounds. I'm still about 30 pounds from my goal, but we'll see how far I get. Um, as long as my BMI is under what my surgeon needs for skin removal surgery, I'm not really gonna probably stress too much about what that final number is. But, yes. So, um, ever since I started this, this journey, even before I actually had the surgery, I was looking at skin removal um, as like, you know, the goal to, to get the skin removed. Cause I knew, I knew that I was gonna have a lot of excess skin and I do, I have a lot of excess skin. Um, and so I looked, I knew that that was something that I was going to be doing. So I was already following surgeons long before I even had bariatric surgery. And one of the surgeons that I have been following probably for the last not quite two years, but close to close to two years, um, definitely over a year and a half, um, is uh, Dr. Gavin Dry with um, a Phoenix. Uh, they're all along the West Coast. They've got spots in Seattle, Portland, um, LA, Orange County, like just lots of different locations. And um, Dr. Dry is located out of the Seattle location. So I have been watching him. And the reason why I'm prefacing this video with that is just that like he has been, and I've followed quite a few surgeons, but Dr. Dry has been my dream surgeon since the beginning. Um, like I said, before I even had weight loss surgery. <laughs> um, so I, when I started finally feeling like, okay, I've lost 160 pounds. Like I'm only 30 pounds from my goal. Like I, I have a lot of loose skin that gets in the way I need to start, you know, and I knew, I knew at the time too, that like, um, that Dr. Dry and a Phoenix in general is, is they book out pretty far. So it's not like I was going to go get a consultation and then, then in two months have, sc have skin removal. It was like, I knew I was going to have like 10 months to a year before I had skin removal surgery. So I was like, you know what, I need to get the ball rolling because there's also something to be said about having a deadline. You know, there's a little bit of like that extra like push to really buckle down and focus um, when you have a deadline versus like just this amorphous like, yeah, someday whenever I hit my goal weight, I'll get skin removal surgery. No, I'm gonna like have a goal. So I decided to have a consultation with the Phoenix. Um, and they, like I said, dream surgeon. Probably somewhere out, someone out there will be like, well, why didn't you have like 10 other consultations? Because he's my dream surgeon. I don't need 10 other consultations. I didn't have 10 consultations before I had my VSG. Blossom was my dream place. Done. I'm definitely somebody, uh, if you don't know me well, which it's the internet, you all don't know me that well. Um, I am somebody who does a shit load of research. Like I don't just, I mean, I have ADHD, so I'm pretty damn impulsive, but I also have that paired with something that my mother taught me, which was to do research. Like when I bought my car, I was on consumer reports comparing all the different years of different makes and models of cars that I was interested in. You know, like I didn't just be like, yeah, I'm just gonna buy this car. No, I did my research. I narrowed it down to like the, the years that I was interested in, the makes and models I was interested in. You know, I went out and I test drove them and then I was like, all right, this is what I want. So it was the same thing when it came to VSG. Like I did, I think at least four plus months of, of research. 
on where I wanted surgery, what I, what the complications were, what this was gonna look like, what am I, what's expected of me, what is my life gonna look like? I did all of the research, guys, and it's the same thing with the skin removal. I did a year of research. I did more than that. I did a year and a half, two, almost two years of research on skin removal, on surgeries, on the surgeons, you know, who I wanted to go to. So a Phoenix and Dr. Gavin Dry, I, they're where I wanna go. So I had a consultation with them two weeks ago now. Um, and I've, I spent the last two weeks honestly being a bit burnt out and also doing a lot of um, just like deciding what I wanted to do. Um, so the consultation was great. I went to the one in Portland for the consultation, which honestly, if I'm gonna give anybody advice, I would say don't get a consultation that's not at the place you wanna go. So I should have gone to Seattle to get the consultation at their, uh, I think it's I think it's Bellevue. Edmond, no, Bellevue, I think it's at Bellevue. But the point is I should have gone directly to them to have, this, have the consultation. Instead, I thought, well, Portland's only two hours away, I'll go there. So I did, I went to Portland, I had the consultation, um, which was lovely, it was about an hour long, they put me in a robe, they looked at my body, we talked about what I wanted, um, and the decision was is that I need a 360 LBL, lower body lift, I think it's also called a belt lipectomy, point is, it goes, it's all the way around, the whole thing. Um, and one of the reasons for that is because I just have a lot of extra skin um, and uh, I including a lot of extra skin on the back. So they're gonna be able to like lift up my ass a bit, which is kind of cool. Um, I, will, I will still have a butt. I'm grateful that I haven't really lost a whole lot of my ass, but my ass is droopy, so it won't be so droopy, which is great. And they're gonna also do, um, words. They are also going to lift my pubic area. <laughs> I'm going to get a vagina lift. That's what I'm going to get. Um, and as well as when they do the lower body lift, they pull down, but they also pull up. So I might get a little bit of a thigh lift as well, along with, like I said, an ass lift. Um, and it should smooth out some of the rolls that are in the back, uh, the top back part of my back, but it may not take all take care of all of it. Um, anyways, that's basically what we decide on. And uh, it's such a big surgery that they, and they're pretty, uh, in my opinion, conservative, which is a good thing um, in terms of like, they don't like to stack a whole bunch of major surgeries. So like, they're not gonna do the 360 LBL plus my boobs, plus my arms. like. They're not going to do that. It's um, it's too dangerous. Basically, you don't really want to be on an operating table more than six hours. And my 360 LBL is going to take about six hours. So they were like, we're not going to do any other procedures. We'll do the LB 360 LBL, and then we'll schedule you for a breast lift and a brachioplasty at the same time. And then we'll do thighs last. So we made a game plan. 360 LBL, six months later brachioplasty, breast lift. Um, they sounds like I do still have enough breast tissue to that I won't need an aug augmentation. I'll still end up somewhere around the realm of a C, which I, which is what I'm kind of looking for anyways. Um, and I really don't want an augmentation. I, I mean, I know there are people out there who do and like, fuck it, more power to you. I don't want that. So as long as I have enough breast tissue to keep, keep some boobies, I'm gonna be happy. Um, so, They'll do the lift and they'll do the brachioplasty and that should potentially take care of a lot of this fat and skin back here. And then six months after that, my thighs. So it'll take about a year and a half. Sorry, there's a carbonation in this a little bit and I keep ripping, so pardon me. Um, so I, yeah, they're gonna do that. <laughs> That's gonna be the plan. Um, it was lovely in the consultation because the, the person who did the consultation was like really paying attention to how I was talking about my body because I've been kind of playing around with possibly doing my breasts and arms first. But then when I was talking about like the parts of my body that bothered me the most, I apparently, and I didn't even know I did this, pointed to my stomach first. 
And she was like, we need to do your stomach first. Like, it's obvious that that is the thing that you actually care about the most. And I was like, what? Brain, you know, exploded. Um, <laughs> so that was really nice to have somebody like actually listen to me and realize like, no, Rebecca, you need the 360 LBL first. It is also the biggest surgery um, and is also potentially has the roughest and longest recovery time. So I was like, all right, let's just get the hardest one out of the way first and then we'll do the rest. Um, when I walked in and I was talking to them, I was, I was literally right at the edge of their BMI. Their BMI is 35 is their limit. Um, we all know BMI is bullshit, right guys? We, we know that. And also, did you know this? I learned this. Um, your BMI changes throughout the day. Because not only do we fluctuate between five and 10 pounds a day, our height also changes. <laughs> and BMI is based on your height to weight ratio, right? And your age and whatever the fuck else. But it's basically height to weight ratio. And you literally are taller in the morning and shorter in the evening. And I have found out through getting my height measured very multiple times over the last few months that I range anywhere there's like a full like quarter to a half an inch in my height that that fluctuates so i'm closer to five seven when i wake up and then i'm closer to five six and a quarter by the end of the day so long story short your bmi fluctuates throughout the day so depending on when you go and get weighed you could be at a 36 bmi and then later the next day in the morning you'll be a 34 bmi so point is it's bullshit Anyway, so I was right on the cusp of their BMI and I was like, is this a problem? They were like, mm, they're not really concerned about it. She was like, can you drop five pounds in the next however long till we schedule surgery? And I was like, probably. <laughs> like, I just take, take a really big shit. And then I'll be under your BMI. <laughs> Anyways, point is, right, I'm right at their BMI. Um, and they're not really super concerned about it because um, I probably have 20 to 30 pounds of excess skin and fat on my body. Subcutaneous fat, let's be clear about that. My visceral fat, we believe is mostly gone. Um, Dr. Dry actually talked about if you lay down on your back and your skin on your stomach is, is completely flat or even like below the line of your ribs, depending on how big your rib cage is, then most of your visceral fat is gone. And anything else that's hanging on it, on you, is subcutaneous fat. And I can twist and move my fat that is hanging out so I know that it's not connected to my organs. <laughs> it's just hanging out on the outside of my body. And basically what they're going to do, which, cause I asked, I was like, am I gonna need lipo, you know? Um, and she was like, no, we're literally, literally they're just going to like, cut me open, peel back my skin. It sounds really gross. And like, take out the fat and then put this, pull, pull the skin back. Like they're just gonna literally cut out my fat guys. Like, <sighs> cause I was terrified. I was terrified because my loose skin to me at least looks different than most people's loose skin. My loose skin has a lot of like hanging fat in it. There's a lot of hanging fat in it, you know? And I was like, mine doesn't look like everybody else's. Everybody else's loose skin that I see is like super, like they can grab the skin and stretch it. And mine's not like that. I can grab all of it. I can grab all of it. You see how, like there's my, there's a waist under there. There's hips under there, but it's just like, they're literally just gonna chop all this off. Fucking throw it away, throw it in a trash can. Hopefully a biohazard trash can. But it's my really long, really long way of saying I was terrified that I hadn't lost enough weight, that I hadn't done enough, that, that something was going to get in the way of me having the 360 LBL. And the truth is, is there isn't. <laughs> so my focus, you know, is really going to be focusing on body recomposition and losing as much weight as I can between now and then. 
I know that I can maintain weight. I'm good at maintaining weight. <laughs> it's the matter of, can we get the last little bit of weight off? So, um, I will probably need muscle repair, particularly in the top part. I have this bulge that sticks out here that won't go away, um, no matter how much weight I've lost. So I think that I'm going to need some muscle repair up there, but you don't really know how much muscle repair you're going to need until they cut you open and take a look. So anyways, but hopefully, hopefully no, no lipo. Hopefully I'm just going to cut away all my fat. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fucking trippy guys. Like it's trippy. I've watched some surgery videos and it just blows my mind what they can do. Um, it also freaks me out. I try really hard not to think about that part, but it also is fascinating to see like what they can do with your body. So, um, and then I guess the last bit of information is just that I have a tentative date. They're holding the date for me, um, until I believe next week when I can, um, uh, pay the down payment, but I have a tentative date. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm gonna probably announce it for sure on the day that they like get my check. But she said I, that they're holding the date for me. So I have a tentative date of April 14th, 2023 with Dr. Dry up in Seattle. And I am so excited because I said yes. I said yes to the surgeon. I said yes to the surgery and I, um, I'm i gonna book it and it's gonna be, it's gonna happen. <laughs> so that's that's exciting news. I'm, I'm still a little bit shell-shocked. I'm a little bit, I'm still a little bit in sticker shock. Um, I'm not going to really talk about the money just yet. I, I probably will at some point, but, um, I'm still a bit, a little, still a little bit in sticker shock because with this kind of surgery and this kind of surgeon, you don't have insurance to cover it. It is all out of pocket. Um, they don't work with insurance. Your insurance won't cover it. It's not like I'm not going to a general surgeon. I'm going to a plastic surgeon. So going to a general surgeon, you might be able to go through your insurance. And if you can document enough like skin issues and, and whatever, like they may pay for a panelectomy and then you can pay a little extra to like have muscle repair or tummy tuck done and make it look a little nicer. But that is not the case <laughs> with Athenix and Dr. Dry. So, um, I probably won't have any health insurance to cover this. This is all out of pocket, which is why it's a little bit of sticker shock. So that plus the fact that like I, like I said, I, in previous videos, like I've been in a stall for a while. So there's a little bit of like frustration of I'm, I still have like 30 pounds to go to where I want to be. And I don't have to get there. There's nothing that says I have to get there. I just have to be under their BMI, which is like three pounds or something from where I'm at right now. So I'm not like worried that I'm not gonna be able to get the surgery. It's just like for my own peace of mind, I'd like to get under 200, but they're also gonna probably move, remove 20 pounds of skin. So I'll probably get under 200 anyways after the surgery, <laughs> after all of the swelling and everything goes down. So I wanna be like ecstatic and really excited and I am. Um, but there is also that like, it's just, it's scary. This is scary. This is a huge surgery. This is so much worse than having my gallbladder removed so much worse than like the VSG surgery. Like this is massive. And I'm about to like voluntarily get three more sur like guys, before I had VSG, VSG surgery, I was fucking terrified of surgery, like fucking terrified of surgeries. And here I am like, yeah, okay, we're going to get three more. <laughs> major surgeries probably won't be the last ones in my life. Yeah, sure. Let's do this. Let's just fucking fillet me up and cut me in half. And <sighs> okay. I'm okay. I'm fine. This is fine. Anyways. All right. That's, that's it for this video. I wrote down notes because ADHD.